What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back. Talking Mets here. Rob, how's everybody doing? Before I get started talking about the big possible trade between the San Diego Padres and our New York Mets, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos, and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys. So the possible blockbuster trade between our New York Mets and the San Diego Padres is a very, very interesting looking trade that can possibly go down that just got rumored and just was focused on Twitter from a couple of reporters this morning, guys. This could be a possible big trade for both teams and is a very interesting trade. So when we look at the, the trade proposal of the names that we heard that could possibly be in the trade, we will look at that in a little bit, guys. But first, we're going to look at the two tweets that were put out this morning from Joel Sherman and Dennis Lynn. Obviously, everybody knows about Joel Sherman and Dennis Lynn, who is a writer for the Athletic. Dennis Lynn says this, The Padres and the Mets have discussed a trade concept concept involving Eric Hosmer, Chris Paddock, and Dominic Smith. Sources tell The Athletic. That is very interesting. That was the first one that popped up this morning. Then not too long after Dennis Lynn tweet, Joel Sherman tweeted this. If Mets do this deal with the Padres, they also would get reliever Emilio Pagan and San Diego would eat a significant amount of Hosmer's deal plus trading Paddock to the New York Mets. That makes the deal so much more interesting and makes it more understandable of why the Mets would actually make this type of deal when it you got a first baseman, so why do the Mets want Hosmer? Paddock makes sense because of the DeGrom injury. He had another guy in the rotation. And Pagan, when you heard that name, you're like, okay, another reliever that can definitely help this Mets bullpen. So those are the two tweets from Joel Sherman and Dennis Lynn. Next, what you want to look at is the Eric Hosmer contract because that is some big, big information that we need to know, especially coming from the Mets' point of view. But if the San Diego Padres are going to pay significant amount of money to trade Hosmer away and bring him to the Mets, they obviously had to put in Paddock as one of the, the better uh, rotation arms. Obviously, the Padres have excess pitches, so Paddock is kind of replaceable. And the Mets could actually get him. But looking at Hosmer's contract, he's making $20 million this year. But has player opt-outs in 2023, 24, and 25 for $13 million. But he also has a trade clause from 2018 to 2020. So anytime after that, he can be traded. Which is obviously the case in this scenario with the Mets and the Padres. So $20 million this year. $13 million over the next three years. With the player opt-out in each of those next three years in 2023 to 2025. That is one thing to look at with Eric Hosmer. But if the Padres are willing to pay a lot of Eric Hosmer's contract just to get rid of him. And obviously to get Dom Smith. It's an interesting trade for the Mets to look at. Because Eric Hosmer will probably be the everyday DH for the New York Mets. Dominic Smith and Cano seem like they were going to be the, the platoon in that DH spot. But Eric Hosmer, you could say, is a little bit better than Dominic Smith bat-wise. I don't necessarily agree. But he is a guy who is a pretty good hitter. Not a lot of home runs. But he plays every day. And that's something to not just throw away because he plays a lot of games. He doesn't miss a lot of games, and that is something you also have to look at as well when you talk about Eric Hosmer and his contract, basically, guys. And looking at Eric Hosmer's stats over the last couple of years, you'll look at it right here, guys. From 2018 to 2021, you'll see it right here. 157 games, 160 games, 151 games. Granted, the home runs are not a lot. In 2019, only three years ago, he had 99 RBIs and 22 home runs. Last year wasn't very good. 65 RBIs with 12 home runs. But there was a lot of issues within the Padres locker room. And I think that's a big reason. I think a change of scenario for Hosmer would really help him bring back his 2019 status. I'm not saying 99 RBIs. But even 80 RBIs with about 15 to 17 home runs. That's what I'm expecting. He's a 260-270 hitter. Which is perfectly fine, especially in this lineup. I do think the New York Mets 
could actually benefit from this trade for Eric Hosmer, especially if they're not paying him a lot of the money and the Padres will look at that money. So that's his stats right there. It's not great stats, but it's another quality bat in a lineup that has a lot of veteran quality bats already. So the Mets are not looking for big power bats. They look for guys who get on base, put the bat on the ball, clutch hitters, which we know Hosmer is. Mets fans know that very well, guys. Hosmer is the guy that is kind of the X factor in this trade, considering that the Mets are probably making this deal because of Chris Paddock. So, when we look at Chris Paddock and his stats, the nice thing about him, before we look at his stats, he's not a free agent until the 2025 season. The Mets have him still on a rookie deal, so he's not costing the Mets a lot of money. But looking at his stats right here, guys, in 2019, obviously, he was fighting with Pete Alonso for that rookie of the year. He had a really good year, 3.33 ERA, 140 in his 26 starts. He did give up 23 home runs. But he lowered that over the last couple of years. In 20, 2020, I'm not even going to look at that much. But 2021 was a little alarming. 22 starts, 5.07 ERA, 108 innings, giving up 15 home runs, and his strikeouts were 99 strikeouts. Again, Chris Paddock, I still think, is a very good pitcher. Again, pitching in that it seemed like a toxic clubhouse seemed like it affected Paddock a lot. I think he's better than what his ERA shows. I think he's more of the 2019 guy than the 2021 guy. I'm not saying a 3.3 ERA, maybe a 3.5, but again, he's going to be a number three, number four in this rotation anyway. And the Mets are looking to bolster up the rotation more, knowing that the ground is going to be out for a couple of months at the very least. So the Paddock deal is basically what's around what the, what the Mets are looking at. Not exactly, hey, if we can get a decent, solid, quality bet in Hosmer and the Padres pay for most of his salary, perfect. That's not a big deal. The Mets ain't really losing out. But Paddock is the big deal, guys. Again, Paddock, not a really good year last year, but I do expect him to bounce back because he is young. He's got really good stuff. And putting him with Hefner and in the same rotation, in the same team with Max Scherzer, could actually help him out going a long way for him to be a very good pitcher. And then the other guy, which I'm going to say is another big piece in this deal, is Emilio Pagan. That is the reliever that the Mets are also focusing in on as well because he's a guy who's closed games in the past for the Tampa Bay Rays. He had 20 saves with the Tampa Bay Rays a couple of years ago in 2019. I think... Emilio Pagan is another X factor in this trade for the New York Mets. Very interesting trade to get Emilio Pagan as well. And if you look at his stats over the last couple of years, in 2019, when he was the closer for the Tampa Bay, or mostly the closer for the Tampa Bay Rays, he had a 2.31 ERA. Last year, he had a 4.83 ERA, but he was more of a guy that wasn't really closing. He had no saves. Uh, for the Padres. So that's something to look at. I think he can be a, a secondary closer. Uh, other than Edwin Diaz. He looks like he thrives in the closer role. But he can be an eighth inning guy as well. That is something to look at. When it comes to Emilio Pagan. So Emilio Pagan would be the third piece. To this puzzle in a blockbuster trade. Involving Eric Hosmer. Chris Paddock and Emilio Pagan. Going to the New York Mets for who? And we're going to look at the trade proposal right here, guys. The trade proposal, the Padres will get Dominic Smith. So you get, you're sending away Dominic Smith for three quality players from the Padres. Eric Hosmer, a very, very good, quality, solid veteran bat in this lineup. Clearly, that's what the Mets are doing with all these signings that they already made with Marte, Escobar, and Kana. Solid, quality players. Who are good clubhouse guys. And Eric Hosmer is one of the most clutch players in the playoffs and in during the season. He's a clutch player. That's another thing you have to look at with Eric Hosmer. Chris Paddock. Obviously not a good year last year. But I still think he can go back to that 2019 status. I think he needs a better environment. A better clubhouse. A better pitching coach. And a guy like Max Scherzer. Talking to him. And being in his ear to help him out going forward. And Emilio Pagan. That would be another arm in that bullpen. That you really like. And another significant thing. Is the Padres would take on. A lot of Eric Hosmer's salary. 
So that's the big thing right there, guys. The Mets wouldn't have to pay a lot for Eric Cosmer while you're still getting that quality bet and that great defense at first when you want to give Pete Alonso a day off or two at first base. Eric Cosmer can clearly play first base with no problem. So the trade proposal, Eric Cosmer, Chris Paddock, Emilio Pagan, and money going to the Mets for Dominic Smith. Once again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content want to see more, Want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. Let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think of this possible trade that can go down very soon? And this was clearly a trade, guys, that wasn't talked about between the two teams over one day because of the Jacob DeGrom move. They must have been talking about this during the offseason. And even recently, as a week ago, these trade talks probably were going on over the last week or two so it's very interesting were the Mets thinking about making this trade even if DeGrom is healthy or was it revamped those talks because of the DeGrom injury let me know in the comments guys what do you think of this trade do you think it's a good trade bad trade or you're in the middle and thinking it's an okay trade let me know in the comments guys really appreciate all the support and as always Mets fans let's go Mets